Hi, I'm Toshi Alfiasin as your personal tutors and today we're going to learn about the most important table which represent all of the elements that exist in our universe. What is it? As you can see from the title, we're going to learn about periodic table. Yes, without any further ado, let's jump right in. So, when you heard about the periodic table, you might have a lot of questions on your mind, such as what is actually the periodic table, and also why does um, the periodic table really important, and so on. So, I suggest you to write all of the questions on the paper or on your phone so that we can discuss that later. But now, I want you guys to recall again about the ATEM first, because ATEM is the basic material to learn about this topic. Alright, so atoms are the fundamental building block that incredibly tiny which cannot even recognize by our naked eyes. An atom consists of three elementary particles which is element, compound, and mixture. When an element was discovered, many scientists adopt different ways to classify them. And also, this uh, birdie table is containing many elements, right? So, this might be the first question that comes up on our mind. Who are they? Who are the scientists who try to find and classify them? To know that, we must travel back in time where people are full passionate to know about our universe. So, so the first among them are Johann Wolfgang de Berener. A German scientist who in 1829 found groups of three elements which showed similar properties and these groups are called as the Bereiner triads. As we can see uh, from this table, the atomic masses of the middle elements was approximately the mean of the atomic masses of the other two elements. As this classification was a primitive step, the Bereiner could only identify a few elements and the others didn't obey the rules. Hence, the system is not very useful. So, after the failures of the Dobereiner triads, the next attempt to classify element was done by John Newlands. He is a British chemist who defies the element's arrangement in order of relative atomic masses in 1865, and he published the law named Octave's Law. It stated that any given element will exhibit analogous behavior to the eighth elements following it in the table. He arranged all uh, the elements in the increasing order of atomic masses and found that every eighth element had properties similar to that uh, of the first. He compared the elements in this table with the uh, octaves in the music. However, this could arrange element only up to calcium out of 56 elements, after which the elements did not show the similar properties. Also, later several, several new elements, which did not feature in the new lens classification, were discovered. And yeah, after the failure of the new lens octaves, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, a Russian chemist, put forward a periodic table that was called the Mendeleev Periodic Table in 1869. It stated that the physical and chemical properties of them are periodic functions of their atomic masses. So Mendeleev believed that atomic masses is the reason why thus the elements is arranged in the periodic table. And here is the example of his table. As you can see, there is some kind of like uh, blank spaces in there. And it's indicate that there uh, there are some elements were not yet to be discovered and he also predict their properties besides his uh, perfections there is still some irregularities which is uh, three point the first point was no fixed positions of hydrogen and then the second is at certain place an element of higher atomic mass has been placed before an element of lower mass and then the last is some element placed in the same group had different properties. And the last uh, scientist was in 1913. He is an English physicist, was Henry Moseley. 
whose contributions to the science of physics was just justification from the physical laws of the previous empirical and chemical concept of the atomic number. So he is the one who found that uh, the reason why the elements is arranged uh, in the periodic table is not because of the atomic mass, but because of the atomic number, which related to the experiment uh, with X-ray. And here is the modern periodic table which uh, anyone use uh, nowadays. By that, we can conclude that periodic table is the most powerful tool chemists have for organizing information that's catalog of all of the different shorts of atoms in the universe. And maybe you have uh, wondering why does uh, it is important? Why does the periodic table is uh, the most important table? As we can see, that uh, without the periodic table, maybe happen a chaotic and also random observation in the laboratories, and it is really dangerous. And another reason why it is really invaluable is because you can predict a lot about the chemical behavior of an element if you know where it is on the periodic table. Let's move on to the fact of the periodic table. As you can see, that periodic table containing 118 elements and 94 uh, of them can be found in the nature and the rest of them are in obtained in the laboratories and this number are still continuing because maybe in the near future uh, a lot of scientists can be found on other elements uh, including you and me can be found on other elements in the future so no worries just enlarge the periodic table okay okay and 118 seems so little to explain the whole universe, right? But it's actually not. Let's take a look. Just like the cookies are made of the different types of ingredients, the meta is also made of the collections of different types of items. As you can see here, for the first is sugar, containing uh, different items in there. And one particles of sugars, containing one carbon, hydrogens and oxygens and then also the coffee that we drink every morning is containing many elements such as carbon hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen and the last is fork and spoon that we used to eat is also containing many elements it is amazing right but maybe you just like mm, i cannot relate to this oh okay i provide you one videos that might be can blow up your minds about this okay Let's take a look. Have you ever seen an atom? Seeing as everything's made of them, you have. But have you ever seen one on its own? Over time, microscopes have become more and more powerful, allowing us to see deeper into the world of the ultra-small. Traditional light microscopes can be used to see things like these onion cells and the structures within them as they divide, pulling apart their chromosomes. But scientists have come up with a whole host of clever methods to observe far smaller things. Using beams of electrons instead of light, we can generate detailed images of chromosomes themselves. Recently, groups of scientists around the world are becoming able to see materials at the most fundamental scale, the atomic. One group from the University of California in Los Angeles have been getting up close and personal with nanoparticles of platinum, just a few nanometers across. Each of the tiny dots you can see here are actually individual platinum atoms. But researchers didn't stop at a two-dimensional picture. By imaging over a hundred slices of the nanoparticle at different angles, then removing the noise with a special filter, they were able to map the location of almost every atom. The information was used to create a three-dimensional reconstruction of the whole particle in unprecedented detail. It may look blurry, but this particle is estimated to contain over 27,000 atoms, and so, like flies in a swarm, they appear to merge together. Every so often, though, we see the platinum's atomic structure align, granting us a moment of clarity. This technique is being used to analyse tiny irregularities in the structure of the particle called dislocations. Dislocations are subtle, like the misalignment of the green and red layers of atoms in this particle. 
but nonetheless they can significantly change the properties of materials, with effects ranging from a change in the efficiency of LEDs to the strength of metal alloys. Three-dimensional atomic scale imaging like this is bettering our understanding of the structure of materials on this truly fundamental scale. So, after you watch the videos, uh, what do you think about the atoms or the elements? Isn't it cool? Isn't it amazing? Is it uh, just... Um, it's okay? <laughs> I believe that you might change your minds after you watch the videos. And hopefully, the videos is helping us to uh, have a better understanding about the elements. Now, moving on. The next question might be up here is how about the distributions of elements in the periodic table? Now, I'm going to tell you uh, or present you about the each element first. Okay, so each element represent of one square in the periodic table and with one or two later chemical symbol. Above the chemical symbol is the atomic numbers and then the symbol itself and the full names of the elements the atomic mass and the last is the common oxidation states right and uh, notice that several of symbols uh, have an unrelated names with the elements some of them are derived in english and some of them are derived in the latin word with uh, we take one example which is ag Ag, uh, we called it as uh, silver, right? But it's actually from the Latin word, which is argentum. So it happened for uh, the rest of the elements in the periodic table. All right, notice uh, that several elements in the periodic table are uh, arranged in the rows and columns, right? Uh, from top to the bottom and also from left to the right. And the arrangement is uh, having their own uh, reason then why don't we just put them in the long list why don't we just like uh, from 1 until 118 like uh, just only the vertical one but it has uh, some kind of like weird arrangement but it's actually have a uh, have a reason and it's divided into two parts the first part is the vertical column from top to the bottom we call it as a groups so maybe you see from here to here and from here to here and also happen for the rest of the of the groups is the same so what is the characteristic of the groups so the elements in the vertical groups have similar chemical properties with the same number of electrons in their outer energy levels please point it out with the similar chemical properties and also the same number of electrons Let's take a look uh, to the example. Let's say for the um, the first group for example, these elements are have uh, one valency electrons or more electrons in their outermost shell. As you can see, it's lithium having uh, three electrons as a total, but only have one uh, electrons in the outermost layers. And so do the uh, the sodium. Uh, sodium has 11, uh, 11 electrons as a, as a total, but only have one electrons as the uh, in the outermost layers. As you go down the table and and increases, you gain shell each time. But whichever is the outermost layer, there is only one electrons in it. Yeah, so. Oh, besides, uh, besides the same characteristics, it is the electrons on the outermost layer, but they have increases uh, the the shell, yeah. So from the top to the bottom, the vertical column is uh, gaining the in uh, shell. So yeah, it's all it's also happened for the rest group, and about the uh, same prop, uh, same chemical properties. Let's say uh, the group one is uh, react uh, react violently with water, and as we go down to group, uh, um, they have uh, more reactive. So yeah, it's the groups. Okay, we noticed that uh, most of the elements, the whole periodic table, is metals, 
and metals uh, characteristics is shiny good conductors of heat and electricity and and then you see the non-metals is placed on the left side and then the right side of the party table which is not shiny and nor good conductors of heat and electricity and then the dividing part of the metals and non-metals are called as metalloids their properties fall between the metals and non-metals and then uh, the last is the transition metals so transition metals is fairly conductivity reliable and electrical conductivity and in the transition metal there is two part in here like from number 57 and 71 and 89 until 103 so the number from 57 until 71 is the lanthanide series and then from the 89 until 103 is actinide series and yep uh, the color in here is represent uh, the properties or the the same uh, properties they have uh, so yeah you can see from this explanation and maybe uh, you can find the detailed information about this because I'm not going to tell you in very detailed information because uh, we, we have a um, limited time but yeah let's moving on to the next uh, topic which is the second uh, what is it? reason of the arrangement of elements which is the periods so in uh, the horizontal row yeah from left to the right is uh, having the same number of energy levels but have an increasing number of electrons in their outer energy levels simply says it has a different properties uh, maybe you are wondering about it right but let's take a look to the example we take uh, the second periods of the periodic table which started from the lithium until neon as you can see here the lithium has three protons and three electrons right here as I slide over from lithium to neon I'm adding more proton and electrons and that happens the, the attractions of electrons to the nucleus becoming more greater and greater yeah started from lithium as you can see yeah it's greater and greater now you notice that neon is smaller than the lithium right uh, so yeah it's also happened like that uh, from the rest of the elements in the periodic table now we can conclude that we have uh, our full trends here from top to the bottom yeah and, uh, and from left to the right uh, from top to the bottom in the groups that the radius is going to increase and the radius is decreases as we go down uh, I'm sorry as we go from left to the right within a period within a period if you think it is the way that uh, this may help you to uh, understand about periodic table and also the fun facts about uh, the elements that here uh, here is the helium helium is the smallest atoms and then the cesium cesium is the, the largest uh, atoms so yeah all right after everything that we've learned today uh, we have to make the summary right yes so the first thing that we know about the table, uh, they are the most powerful tool chemists have for organizing information dense catalog of all of the different short subatoms in the universe. And also we know about the groups inside the periodic table, which are the elements in the practical column that have a similar chemical properties with the same number of electrons in their outer energy levels. And the last we know about the periods. They are in the horizontal rows uh, and share the same and number of uh, energy levels but have an increasing number of electrons in their outer energy levels. Simply says it has a different properties. Okay, that's how we end up these sessions. I suggest you to learn other topics which still related to periodic table that are metals. Yes, you can find another videos or, or another courses that are talking about metals in details. 
and yep you can uh, gain your understanding and also your interest about chemistry all right that's all about the periodic table i hope you like it and also understand about this material so that we can be grateful for everything and yep um before i end up the session i want you to visit the quizzes application because i provide some question in there which is mini quiz it's not really hard questions but yeah just enjoy the class and yep thanks for watching see you soon bye bye